A London doctor is one step closer to seeing his 3D printed stethoscope be put to widespread use. Dr. Tarek Lubani began designing the stethoscope three years ago with the aim of giving doctors in low income countries and war zones the ability to make their own devices with little cost. As Caldeun tells us, the stethoscope has recently been validated in a major scientific journal. It should be the case that stethoscopes are accessible to everybody involved in caring for a patient. But while here in Canada we see it around the neck of every doctor, in many places stethoscopes are hard to come by. When I'm over in uh, the Gaza Strip, when trying to listen to the chests of people who were shot or involved in bombings, I was using my own stethoscope and sharing it with 10 other physicians for about 100 other patients. Tarek Lobani is a Palestinian Canadian doctor. He has seen firsthand the struggles of doctors working in countries ravaged by war or poverty. The cost of current stethoscopes is ridiculous. They're really expensive. And by expensive, we're talking upwards of $250. So here at Western's Schulich School of Medicine, Lubani and his team have spent the last three years developing a much more affordable 3D printed stethoscope using cheap, everyday materials. One of them is plastic, which is printed out of a 3D printer. The tube that we use is silicone tube that's uh, found in any um, Coca-Cola machine or very widely available. And the last part is some plastic, which you can find in any duotang. In a matter of hours, it's printed and ready for use. The cost, $3. And when compared with the gold standard, it proved to be of similar quality. Lubani's stethoscope has now been peer-reviewed and published in a major journal. That's a major achievement. Now, the final step is to get more doctors to reproduce it. For Lubani, the project is also a personal one. As some may recall, he and Toronto filmmaker John Grayson were detained during demonstrations in Cairo back in 2013 after they tried to make their way to Gaza. They were released months later with the help of the Canadian government. Really what I owe to the Canadian population who helped me get out, what I owe to the Egyptians I left behind in jail, and what I owe to the Palestinians who are under occupation is to work as hard as I can all the time to make sure that things get better for them. Kelda Yun, CTV News.